Hey, it's Jeremy from Jeremy.net. I am a comic book artist, writer, creator, self-publisher, and I share my creative process here with you online. If you would like to get additional bonus live streams twice a month, you can become a Patreon subscriber at patreon.com slash Jeremy. That's patreon.com slash G-E-R-I-M-I. Uh, in addition to the bonus live streams, you get access to a Patreon exclusive Discord server and a digital archive where you can read my comic books. If you would like to get a free digital sketchbook, work in progress, animated GIFs delivered right to your inbox, blog posts about what I'm reading, what I'm watching, what's inspiring me creatively, you can sign up for my free monthly newsletter at newsletter.jeremy.net. And if you'd like to purchase physical copies of my comic books, or if you read digitally on Kindle, you can go to amazon.jeremy.net. That will forward you to my Amazon author page. You hit on over there, pick up these books, and if you want to check them out before you buy, head over to the homepage of my YouTube channel. There are book flip throughs of all the books so you can check them out. And I see Byron is in the chat already. Hey, hey, Byron, how you doing? James is here. Omar is here. James is going to stick around for a bit. I know people always get busy on the weekend, so if you can't make it for the whole stream, I'm glad to have you for while you're here. So, speaking of being busy, we're going to be doing some more figure drawing today, mostly because schedule-wise this week, I've had a really busy schedule, haven't really been able to put a lot of time into personal projects. But one of the things that I personally have found essential to my creative practice is being able to on a weekly basis, sit down with, uh, well, taking an online figure drawing class. I've mentioned I've been studying with Carl Ganas for a number of years. Um, but being able to not just do the, the drawings from the model during class, but more importantly, the thing that has helped me grow the most as an artist over the years is being able to sit down with my work after class and just do an analysis sit down, look at the drawings I made, look at the ones that came out well, look at the ones that came out poorly, and just uh, just adjust, make some, some tweaks. L look at where the volumes are wrong. Look at where the anatomy is off. So these are from this past week's session. And I will tell you, these were a little bit longer. I think these were like six minute poses. And I almost feel like it's a bit of a cheat because sometimes when you're drawing, everything is clicking right. And I feel like I got a good batch of drawings this past week. <laughs> I saw, saw Omar gave, gave me some, some hearts, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate the love. Thank you. <laughs> James also says, I think you, uh, you can consider what drawings have the, um, have the most life. Um, yeah, you know what? That's very, very true. I keep putting notes to myself in my drawings, just writing the words feel, because sometimes you may capture something, but it feels stiff and not particularly alive and energetic. And sometimes you draw something that it might have some very wonky anatomy, but it still has some, some life and, and energy to it. So it's weird because on the weeks when things are going well, I don't give myself credit. But on the weeks when things are going badly, I'm like, oh, well, this is because of my lack of skill. So either I, I got to decide, is it that I have a certain amount of skill and when they're good, I should take some credit for that? Or is it that it's all luck and the days when I have uh, when I have good drawings are good luck and days when I'm drawing bad drawings are bad luck? Um, since I wouldn't be practicing if I did if I thought it was just luck, it must at some point be skill. So I suppose I have to take some credit for the days that they're coming out well. But I still need to, I still tend to not beat myself up. But I focus on what I need to learn when it comes to the uh, the drawings, the days when it's when it's not coming out well. So one thing I'm gonna start with, I guess, really, is this pose right here. Now, there's a nice amount of tone and shading on the character, a nice perspective, but I, you know, I put a little note in here for myself. It says between, there's not enough, I need more space between the eyes and the base of the nose. So between here and here is just too crunched, too compressed. So what I tend to do 
is before coming in, I'm, my goal is not to just redraw this perfectly as is, but just with the corrections made. My goal is to actually really understand on a structural level what I did wrong. So I may, and not may, I frequently tend to redraw these things two or three times. And the first time, it's just simple, simple primitive shapes. Spheres and cones and cylinders, just trying to correct the major flaws that I see there. And that correction alone may take a few drawings to get. Hang on a sec. Even though the head is faced at that angle, I want to start by getting the brow line placed properly. And this is also challenging because it's a it's a three quarter, but it's a three quarter with the model tilted backwards. So I've got that that double challenge of both getting the underside of the chin. Well, it's a triple challenge because I'm getting the underside of the the chin, getting the distance between the the nose and the brow, correcting the thing that's the actual correction, and getting the head turning away from us at three quarters. So there's a lot of difficulty in this particular pose for me to work on. And even this, I already feel like I'm squishing the base of the nose in again. And it might actually be the fact that it's not so much that the base of the nose is squished in too much as it is at this angle, maybe there should be less forehead. Maybe the brow line should be up higher. And this is what I mean when I mention that I will do multiple drawings. Because this drawing here where I'm just trying raising the brow line, I don't know for sure if that's going to fix the problem. I may try another one with the brow line pretty close to where I had it before and just try to uh, maybe push the mouth down lower. It may take me a couple of tries of just drawing simple primitive shapes before I really figure out what it is that is or isn't working. And I'm just double checking because my screen is doing a, a weird thing where in the streaming software, it's not showing me the camera. So if for some reason you guys can't see the camera and I'm just talking over a blank screen, let me know. But yeah, right now, it's just a matter of trying to get the primitive forms locked in in a proper position. I've been trying to also pay attention to how the the skull basically comes together in that the part with the brow and brow line almost sort of form one half of a mask. And then the part that comes underneath forms the, the cheeks and the cheekbone are kind of the other side of that. And I think being aware of it in this mask-like form
it just helps me focus on what is the structure of the face. Kind of got the cheekbone sliding behind the muzzle and the chin coming back out. See, that's a bit too much. That's sort of a weird. Cutting too much of the, the face out. And I'm actually wondering, do I need to push the muzzle over a little bit more? I might have it too centered. So yeah, this is all just a lot of primitive shapes. Very, very blocky. And if I were, you know, a lot of times drawing in class, I'm intentionally trying to not do this blockiness. Or I'm trying to hide the blockiness in tones. So like I will try to make the shapes like this fit in with say the shadow on the underside of the muzzle. Or if I'm trying to define the side of the nose. Then maybe I will look and say, all right, here's a structural line defining where the nose is going up. And I'll just put a shadow on the other side of that as opposed to just putting lines there. But this is a, a drawing for analysis. So if I want to be linear, if that's the clearest way for me to understand what it is I'm trying to do, then I will just do that. This eye feels like it needs to be pushed in a little bit further, a little bit closer to the nose. Now, actually, at this point, what I kind of need to do is go in here and put some lines to make sure all my features line up because this far in, I am getting a weird sense that when I say line up, I mean that the brow line and the base of the eyes should be parallel. Base of the nose should be parallel. See right here, this line is a little bit off. Even though I'm intentionally trying to make parallel lines right now, I'm getting a little bit wonky there. And that could just be as simple as I'm not paying as close enough attention while I'm making marks and I'm letting them, my hand just sort of do what it wants. And my hand will get lazy and things will curve to the side instead of staying parallel the way I want them to. So do you guys spend time doing study just for the sake of study, just for uh, trying to improve your, your skills? Because I realize I, and this is something I, I kind of wrote for a future blog post uh, on Patreon, but I realize that I'm falling into the trap that I have told many, many other people not to fall into, where I'm spending more time studying versus actually making finished things. So it is a balance because if you let yourself there is so much, the, the learning never ends. So it is very possible to fall into the trap of eternal study and never actually making 
a finished piece of work. And I remember that for many years, I did very, did very little anatomy study or perspective or, or composition. And it was when I started realizing my work was missing something that I started taking it more seriously. But I've been studying for so long and so intently that now I have to fight that same danger that I've warned about where sometimes I'm spending too much time on just the studies. So while I'm sitting here asking whether you guys study or not, you know, I acknowledge that I might be going a bit overboard lately. But I have noticed in my personal work, I can see the difference. I can see where the, that study goes on the page in terms of like the last three or four issues of Morningstar I felt were significantly higher in craft than the first three. Like pure energy and uh, and just guts got me through those first two or three issues of Morningstar. But by the end, I was really working on trying to push my draftsmanship skills on each issue, trying to push my composition, my lighting, my character, my figure drawing, all of it. Let's see here. And James says, I haven't done studies in a while. Um, you know, well, I I will tell you that's one of the reasons why I like the uh, the, the figure drawing classes is because it's kind of like I get in two study sessions a week. Study session one is the actual time in front of the model. Then study session two is what I'm doing now where I'm going in and doing analysis. And I will tell you that probably for the first probably the first eight years of taking figure drawing classes, not five years, eight years. For the first eight years, I did not do what I'm doing now. I just went to class, did my drawings, and came home. Rarely looked at them other than when I was in class. And only after about eight years of study and hearing multiple times that I should be looking at my work from class, did I go back and start looking at my drawings and just asking the question, what's wrong? That's all. Just looking at the drawing and looking at it with that sense of, and this is why I always tell you that your mistakes are your, your biggest learning tool. Um, just looking at the drawing and saying, all right, what is it that I'm trying to get it to do that it's not doing? Is it an anatomical problem? Is it a lighting problem? Is it a volume problem? Um, just breaking it down into those simple categories and saying, what's wrong with this drawing? And then trying to fix it by redrawing it a few times. Let's see here. CJ King is in the chat. Good to see you, man. He says, good day, brother and people. Looks good and uh, see you well. Yeah, yeah, doing well. Um, chugging along here. In fact, I'm at a bit of a transitional point because I'm trying to decide if I want to finish those that Space Station storyboard series I was doing or get back to uh, my comic. And to be honest, the logic, first off, it's more that I hate leaving projects unfinished. That's the drive to, to finish the uh, the space station story. But secondly, I still have rewrites to do on the new comic. The outline, I'm really going back and, and trying to flesh out the uh, the character, not motivations, but the relationships between the characters, how they interact, how and why, how the relationships change and then revise the plot around those emotional changes. Now, see, right here I can tell you that I'm seeing something interesting in this drawing when I'm talking about how I will redraw something multiple times. So this drawing feels structurally more solid than the source drawing. 
But what it is missing is the tip. And this goes back to something that James said earlier about, um, about which drawing has more life. Like this drawing might be structurally correct and in perspective, but this drawing has attitude. This drawing actually feels like he's sticking his chin up, pointing it out at you like, hey, what's up? You know, and it's almost like it's the subtle difference between, okay, you're looking at this drawing and you're looking at it from an underside three quarter versus the attitude of that, just the, the, the kind of like the, the poking out of the chin, like there's acting, there's performance in this drawing, in this lower drawing. And I got to tell you, being able to put the skull right here next to it is kind of really good for illustrating the idea and the difference. And the difference is not just the angle. It's the fact that that slight extra amount of force shortening so that more of the underside of the, like, the lip, the, the muzzle, the way that that sits there, the space between it is not necessarily that it's closer, but it's rising above it. It's like there's, there's a foreshortening in this drawing where you're actively seeing chin with muzzle behind it, with nose still on the muzzle, but kind of on the backside of it. So it's behind that. There is more foreshortening happening. And then cheekbone behind that. There's more foreshortening in the original drawing than I got here. I kind of flattened it out. It's almost as if instead of changing the angle, I switched lenses. So I went from a wide angle lens to a telephoto lens and just looking at it zoomed in as opposed to looking at it with a wide angle lens where you get distortion. So I'm gonna keep working on this drawing. I'm not gonna bail on it. But what I am gonna do is when I get done with this, I'm gonna come back and try another where I'm really trying to push the foreshortening on this. And usually what happens when I do these drawings is I go like, I do the first one and I go a little bit too much in, oh, it's structural, but it's plain. And I go the other way where now there's foreshortening, but it's a little bit cartoony. There's a little bit of back and forth to try and get to the right place. Okay. All right. Um, let's see here. Jay King says, sound good, brother? Thank you. Thank you. Um, You know what's funny is I was thinking, oh, yeah, James jumped in and said, uh, you're right, but you can learn new things even if you're experimenting. I've been adding cancer tumors to the kidney faces and making them more asymmetrical, so I'm learning in that sense. Yeah, well, because the tumors that you're adding are structural. They're volumetric. Um, you know, you're, you're experimenting and pushing with form and, and volume by doing that, you know, and I realized for me, just now I had the thought, the reason why I can be so dispassionate about coming in here and making corrections and saying, this is, this is wrong. This is right. This needs to be moved over here is because these are studies, um, you can do the exact same thing with a finished illustration that you're working on. If you're working on a comic, if you're working on a, a illustration or a painting, you know, this same exact process of really looking at it and trying to break down what is and is not working structurally, not only can you, but you should be applying it to, uh, to those works. But I think a lot of times when you're doing something that you're intentionally defining as a finished piece, um, you put more pressure on yourself. You know, it feels like the stakes are higher 
And that alone can make the process either more difficult or just make it stressful. It can make you feel differently about doing the same work. Whereas, you know, this is just me trying to fix a drawing that I spent six minutes doing. Um, the drawing didn't come out right. And I'm just sitting here saying, all right, well, what can I do to make this drawing better? Um, the stakes feel very low. And I think that is a big difference. Now, if I could just tell myself mentally, you know what? Don't get it. Don't get uh, overly excited about things that aren't working well. Like whether it's working on a comic page or a, a painting or client work, to just tell myself, hey, it's okay that things aren't going well. Just just come in and analyze. Just just look at it, take it apart. What's working, what's not. And revise and re and fix. Revise and refocus. In fact, I'm putting that down. That's going to be the name for this video. Hey, come here. Oh, I'm bringing the cat condo close by because uh, Khaleesi is down on the floor here making some noise. You want to come up? Hey. Come on up. Sometimes she wants to join the live stream. Sometimes she just lays it on the floor and insists. I would prefer her to just jump up on her own so I can keep working. All right. Yeah, see, I have totally removed the foreshortening around the nose. The sense of the nose being on the back side of the uh, the muzzle, sitting on this sphere as it turns away, that sense is completely lost here. Maybe it's because I need to put a shadow in on this side. And I have to be very careful about shadows on the right side of this figure because something that I've been making myself pay more attention to Common sense, it's obvious, but sometimes you need to mentally realize, oh, duh, this is just something I should know every time I do a drawing. But I realized that I was cleaning up, making these kinds of corrections on a drawing from a couple weeks ago, and I realized that I could not remember in the video what side the figure was lit from. So now at the start of each class, I will make a notation of what side is the light side. And in this case, the figure is being lit from the right. The shadows are on the left side. In fact, they're actually being lit from the right hand side above. The light source is up here. So that makes me want to be very, very cautious and very delicate with any light, with any shadow that's on the right-hand side. Because I only want to put enough tone in there to indicate a plane change, not enough to make it really dark. Something else I've been trying to think about is just the fact that 
in general, the entire structure of the eye, if it's spherical, to just sort of treat this all like a sphere. The whole eye socket You've got a sphere and a bowl, but both of them have light coming across them in this way. And then on the upper side, because this is con concave, put a little bit more tone on that inside above the actual eyelid. Because you've got the, those three tiers of structure. You've got the eye, you've got the eyelid, then you've got that space between the lid and the brow. Then his eyes kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Laconic. Not quite lazy, but relaxed and laid back. Like when you see those videos or images, those National Geographic images of a crocodile floating in the water, and you're just sort of looking at you with those eyes that are kind of sleepy, but at the same time still alert, laconic. And the cheek and the uh, the left brow are out too far. So I'm going to draw in what I think they should be. I'm going to draw this inside first, and then I'm going to erase. Because I also have a bad habit. And this is a good tip for you guys. When you notice that something's wrong, a lot of times you just erase the whole area and then try to draw it again. And more often than not, you just draw the same mistake over again. If at all possible, like if this was not wide enough, it would almost make sense to do the opposite where I'm drawing on the outside first. But to draw, if you can remember, and I have to force myself to do it, I don't do it automatically. But if I can remember to draw the correction first so I can see the difference, I'm going to bring this a little bit closer to you guys. So now you can see. There's a line in here, which I just drew, versus that outer line, which is where I originally had it. Now with this new line, it feels more like the angle, in terms of how far the head is turning to the left, it feels like it matches better with the line that's on the inside. And now that I've done that, I'll come in here. I usually use this guy, but it's a small line. I don't want to screw up too much for what's around it. So I'm going to use it. I've got an e. This, like, this is one of those simple stick erasers that you usually just buy at whatever uh, office supply store. You know, um, you don't have to go anywhere special to get these. But this one, it's a, a Tombow Mono Zero. So it's like the thin line eraser. And my electric eraser, I really only save that for when I'm working on a pen and ink, work on traditional comics and stuff. I do have an electric eraser, but I don't use it for charcoal drawings. But now I'm going to come in here, get rid of that outer line. And mind you, as I'm doing these corrections, this whole time I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, this is better. This is an improvement. I'm still going to have to go back and redraw this whole thing to try and get the foreshortening. And to be honest, considering how much time I've spent here, almost 40 minutes, I don't know how far I will get on that next attempt, particularly because the next attempt is going to be harder than this one. This one was me just trying to fix anatomy. 
get the volumes, the fix that spacing problem that I had the first time. And now that I really understand what I was doing wrong in terms of this, the nose and the eye being too close together, it's not necessarily that they are too close together. It's that I haven't properly established the foreshortening between the two of them. So in this, I've straightened it out. So I've fixed the foreshortening problem, but I've lost, well, I've fixed the spacing problem, but not the foreshortening problem. They're two different problems. Um, I have gotten rid of the spacing problem. And by getting rid of it, I've hidden the foreshortening problem. But I know it's really there. And for me, it is important to, anytime I try to fix a drawing and I realize, oh, I've just eliminated the problem. Eliminating a problem from a drawing is an approach. If you are in a time crunch and you just need to get it done, or if the purpose that you're drawing, doing the drawing, whether it's for whether it's for you or for a client, if the purpose that you're doing the drawing doesn't need, like for instance, in this case, it's a foreshortening problem. If the, if that foreshortening problem is not important to the end result, then screw it, shine it, move on, just you know, cut it and move on. But in the context of wanting to learn to be a better artist, I want to be able to draw whatever I imagine or envision or, or observe. If I observe a certain phenomena, I want it to be a choice that I'm not going to draw that. I'm, I'm going to lessen the force shortening. I don't want it to be something that I do because I don't have the ability. And that is the reason why I would go through so much, so much extra lenses to draw this entire thing a third time, just trying to improve the foreshortening. His eyes feel a little big the way I drew them there. And I also went a little bit darker with the shadows than they probably need to be. All right, so I learned some stuff from this drawing. I'm going to start taking another stab at this now with more foreshortening. And this, I will admit to you, this is the tedious part of trying to get better as an artist. Um, I think most people wouldn't want to just draw the same pose multiple times. Um, I mean, animators have to do it when they're doing a pose and then doing the gradual turns and movements. And if you're drawing a Batman comic, you better get real comfortable with drawing Batman all the time. But just for the sake of anatomical study to sit there and just do a drawing and just redo it with tiny variations. I mean, I don't, I don't find it tedious because I almost look at it kind of like gamifying the process. Like if this is me playing... Final Fantasy or or Zelda. And this is me trying to find whatever that weapon is that I need to get to the next level. This is me exploring that particular dungeon. That's what this is. This is dungeon exploration. 
in the RPG of drawing. So now, even at the block end, I'm trying to be very conscious of foreshortening. And part of this challenge is finding the right place to place the chin. Trying to get the neck placed in here before I get too far. So now comes the challenge. Fitting in the muzzle. And something else I'm also trying to mentally think about is that space between the muzzle and the eye sockets. Because this space in here This is the space that was wrong in the first drawing. And that space really helps express the volume and structure of the face. And I think what I did wrong in that original drawing was I did not convey overlapping forms. And I also, I kind of need to make a decision here about the brow because I do have the brow as a rounded form, but this idea of keeping these lines parallel, this eye is, the left eye is too low. And that's, you know, one of those decisions about realizing, oh, these things need to be parallel. And I kind of need to resolve how I want these things to line up because by raising it higher, I am now making the left eye larger than the right eye, which I don't want. I want the eye that's closest to the viewer to be larger. In fact, it's kind of convenient that I've got a skull here in my hand because this is what I really need to do is forget about the face, the way the face all lines up and look at this from a skull perspective, maybe even holding this up. In 
fact, let's stop worrying about the face and just worry about the foreshortening of the skull. Because I think that will help me more than uh, than fixating on the model himself. So yeah, I'm really trying to, to focus here on these forms, one in front of the other. Now, even though I'm really focusing on the skull, I do need to draw the nose in here because the way that the nose cuts in front of the eye is important to the drawing. And I need to make that left nostril much smaller because it's not necessarily that he has large nostrils, but the one on the right is facing sort of turned. It's You know, the nostrils are angled. Everyone's nostrils are angled differently depending on the shape of their nose. In this case, at this angle, we're looking at the widest shot of the nostrils. They're pointed out towards us more, more than I have in that drawing. In that sense, that's a place where I definitely failed. This needs to be even narrower. It's hard to get these subtleties. Get that lower lip like a shelf here. I almost feel like I'm not conveying. As a matter of fact, let me just erase this mouth. Because what I want, this section right here, what I want this muzzle to feel like is like we're looking at the underside of a ball. Um, 
if I turn off one light here so we get a little bit more directional light. What I want is it for it to feel like we're really, like even this shadow line that's down there, I really want to feel like we're looking at it like we're looking up at a sphere that's sort of embedded in the surface. Actually, I'm put my hand behind it. Like it's embedded in the surface of the face. Kind of like that. And we're looking up at it. And right now it doesn't quite feel that way. And I think something else that will help is if I get rid of a little bit of the bottom of that, the bottom of the, the muzzle and let the chin cover some of that. This is one of those where the surface, I've been drawing and erasing so much, the surface is getting weird and wonky. That's one of the downsides of working on a, on newsprint. If you're just doing quick sketches, it gives you a nice, a nice feel. But the more you work the surface, like I am, the more, the less integrity the surface has. It starts to kind of collapse. The fiber stops holding up to uh, to drawing and erasing on it. And it starts to become more like you're drawing on mud or sand. I mean, it'll hold up to a long drawing as long as you're not drawing and erasing a lot like I am. See, I think that, and the real challenge is figuring out how to convey this with tone instead of uh, instead of line. But what I'm doing right here, this is what that drawing is missing. Denture sphere sitting in front of the cheekbone, chin sitting in front of the, the, the muzzle there. What? I can't even see you. Khaleesi's back there yowling. So I'm putting little sharp hooks on these forms to kind of just... Y yes? Oh, no, I know what it is. She wants me to open the window. But I have to keep it dark in here because if I open the, the window behind the screen, there's a window behind me. If I open that, I become backlit so that all you see is just me as a silhouette, which is not great for streaming. So she is just going to have to suck it up and live without the window open for a few more minutes. But speaking of a few more minutes, we're almost at the top of the hour. Um, I'll go a little bit longer just because I want to kind of bring this drawing in for a landing. I'm really moving away from the model here and trying to move into just... structure and primitive volumes. And even this, as I've drawn it here, I feel like I still haven't gotten as much foreshortening out of this as I should. If anything, I'm not going to 
continue on with the live stream. But if anything, I'm probably going to do one more drawing where I go extreme with the force shortening and really push his head back. One of the things that makes it challenging is that I'm getting force shortening like this, but I'm getting it while the head is tilted and turned. Those are the things that are, are making it so that what should normally be easy, keeping the features aligned, is feeling like a, a battle. And to be honest, it shouldn't be a battle. I should be able to draw well enough that it's just like, oh, that's what the face is doing. Here's where the volumes are. Um, that's the point of the practice. The point of the practice is to solve this problem, busting my ass to get it so that in future drawings, I can sit down and it's like I really just have to practice drawing at difficult foreshortened angles. And then once I've done it enough times, it ceases to be a problem, or at least it's a problem that I can work through faster versus uh, the amount of time that it took me here. Yeah, this, the paper surface is really starting to give way underneath all of this drawing and erasing. And again, I need to, damn it, I pushed a little bit too hard. And what's crazy is the tip is not snapped off on this, pen, on this uh, pencil, but I heard a tiny little click that tells me that in a few more lines, it's going to break. I can draw for a little bit long. Hello. You guys probably can't see her on the camera, but... This cat condo has like two levels and she's on the level just below the camera. Do you want to come up top? You want to come up top? Okay. Okay. If I turn the camera ever so slightly, you can see Khaleesi here. Hi. She's jealous of all the attention you guys are getting. And she's like, I want to hang out. I want you to pay attention to me. Hi, sweetheart. I still got to wrap up the live stream. Again, whenever you're, I've posted video, pictures on, uh, on Instagram or just on the, uh, the community feed, community tab on a uh, on YouTube whenever you see one of our cats sitting on my drawings it's Khaleesi she's the art director here she likes to to come in and uh give her feedback and she's like hey daddy your foreshortening is a little off there the anatomy's looking wonky you might want to fix that she is quite the critic all right all right. All right. All right. I, I, I think that she, this is her way of telling me to wrap up the stream. <laughs> let me let me at least suggest the eyes in here.
maybe bring that uh that brow is probably a little bit out too far. See, the, the foreshortening is starting to come together here now. And part of that is giving that sense of the volume of the skull, but giving it much lower than we're seeing it. Getting that volume down here instead of up above. Oh, now you want to come sit up top, right? This one. This one. This is this is this is my co-host, everybody. Meet Khaleesi, art director. Sweetheart. There we go. She has settled down. Um, so, you know, like I was saying before, there is slightly more foreshortening in this one than there is in that one. Um, and that's the crazy thing about this. A lot of times it's just adjusting the angles. Yep, like I said, this I knew this thing was going to break. It's only a matter of time. So I heard that little snap. It's a reminder to not push so hard, both in drawing and in life. Damn it. That one I think you guys might have heard. Wasn't as bad as the, the one that broke the previous pencil, but like a little tip just snapped right off. Which often happens when I over sharpen. So there's a divot in here, but I'm also, there's also a, a little, I don't know, a Van Dyke, a little soul patch. I mean, normally I think it's only called a soul patch if it's there and there's no goatee, but he has a goatee. You know what? I'm going to erase that only because what's important is not the facial hair, it's the structure. And I really, to be honest, getting the structure correct is far more important to me than redrawing this, that I correct the facial flaws. And I am straightening the mouth out in a bad way. This mouth, the same way that I was fighting to keep the eyebrows at an angle, the cheeks at an angle, I'm straightening the mouth out so it's more at a surface the mouth i'm drawing it more at this angle as opposed to that angle i need to fix that Anyways, getting the chin in front of the muzzle helps sell that foreshortening. And I'm just putting some tone in here, not for the goatee, but just to kind of 
give you the sense of a change in plane. It's turning away from the light now. All right, we are going to wrap this up because, honestly, I could keep working on this all day. I'm not going to work on it all day, but like I said, I'm actually going to do one more drawing where I come in and try to really push that foreshortening. Khaleesi seems to... Uh, to agree with that assessment. But I will tell you, like I said, all of this study, this may has made a difference in my comic book work. Um, I really have felt like my craft in terms of telling visual stories was enhanced by studying and working to improve my anatomy, my sense of volumes, my sense of structure. Doing all these things has made me a better comic book illustrator, visual storyteller. I'm getting a little carried away with the tones here. It doesn't need all this. Get that side of the nose. see here. Jay King says, thank you for your time, brother. I appreciate it. You know, I mean, thank you guys for, for hanging out with me. Um, you know, like I always say this, having someone to share this time with and share sort of the, the studies and the challenges, it helps me. If it does anything for you guys, then I'm grateful for that, for having someone to share it with. But for me, it's sort of like, you know, the work that we do as artists, both in terms of making the work, but just studying the craft of art, it can feel like a lone trek screaming into the void. Um, you're just out here in the, the darkness of the cosmos looking for answers. And the idea of knowing that other people are doing the same or are interested at least in the answers that you're bringing back in your own personal exploration, in my personal exploration, um, I value it. I cherish it. It really does mean a lot to me. So thank you. I'm just breaking shit left and right. <sighs> All right. Definitely time to wrap it up. <laughs> Let me go back to the big kahuna here. All right. This one is settled down. <clears throat> All right. I guess she doesn't want to sign off. She's like, you handle, you, you handle the busy work. Okay. All right, gang. Here, let me get this drawing board out of my lap. Oh. And on that note if you enjoy these live streams consider subscribing to my patreon it's a community that we have online we um we do two bonus live streams a month and these are uh two and a half three hour long live streams we do a thing called art book study group where we do deep dives into some of the best art books around try to suck out all the knowledge we can um similar to kind of these studies but Instead of just working on my drawings, I'm looking at uh, educational material from uh, 
from great art books. We've been doing a long running series on Walt Reed's The Figure. Um, we're like into like the, we're past the hundred page marks. We're kind of like in the last 20% of that book. But uh, we've done some George Bridgman, some Ken Holtgren, variety of studies. Um, in addition to that, we have a Patreon exclusive Discord server where we, we talk shop throughout the month, give each other feedback, tips, uh, encouragement, talking art shop, um, sharing art business topics and, you know, converse, conversation and more. So, oh, and also you get a, an access to an online archive on Patreon where you can read my comics digitally there. So all of that for as little as $2 a month. There are higher tiers for higher rewards, but $2 a month gets you in. Um, and in fact, Patreon has free trials now, so you don't even have to pay. You can just go over there and just sign up. And you get a, uh, a free trial. I can't remember if it's a 30-day trial or a, or a, a one-week trial. But point is, you can just go over patreon.com slash G-E-R-I-M-I. Sign up. Look around. Check out some of the posts. See the see what's on there. Um, watch some of the art book study groups. See if they're helpful, interesting to you, entertaining. And then if you don't like it, after seven days, you should cancel. But you can head on over there. Check that out. Patreon.com slash Jeremy. Um, if you would like a free digital sketchbook, work in progress, animated gifts, delivered right to your inbox, blog post about what I'm reading, what I'm watching, what's inspiring me creatively, sign up for my free monthly newsletter at newsletter.jeremy.net. And if you want to purchase physical copies of my comic books or free digitally on Comixology or Kindle, then uh, head over to amazon.jeremy.net. They'll forward you to my Amazon author page. You can check out books like my first graphic novel, Eye of the Gods. I'm the artist and writer. It's a psychological thriller about a man cursed with visions he cannot control. Um, and there's my most recent project, Morning Star. Uh, re it's telling Lucifer's fall from heaven as a Western. It's an eight issue series. Volume one contains issues one through four. Volume two contains the conclusion to the story, issue five through eight. Both volumes have extensive back matter, script excerpts, thumbnails, character designs, page layouts, photo reference, and more. I basically show you how I put the entire book together. And if you want to check out what's inside these books before picking them up, go to my YouTube channel. Scroll down to book flip throughs, and you can see book flip throughs, see what's inside these books before you pick them up. So definitely check that out. And lastly, I don't say this enough. I should say it at the start of the video, just to, to remember, hit the like button. If you like these videos, hit the like button. If you know somebody else who would enjoy them, hit the share button. Share it with people. Forward it to people. Help spread the word. I would greatly appreciate it. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate all of you. I appreciate my time with you. That's it for now. Go be creative.